So today I'm going to bring you guys my Appliancer deck, a deck that I've been very, very excited about, a deck that I plan on making a lot of videos on. In this first video, I'm going to go over the quote-unquote pure Appliancer deck list. This is an 100% pure. I am playing a couple of cards where you could argue it's not pure, but I feel like other cards are kind of needed to make the deck at least function. So first, I'm going to go through the deck list really quickly, and then I'll go back and explain everything, why I'm playing it, how the deck works, and why I think it's really fun. If you want a TLDR, not a great deck, but it is pretty fun and can spam out a lot of monsters that do really cool things. So first off, we have the triple appliance or socket roll, the triple copy buckle, and the triple breaker buckle. These are the only appliancers in the main deck. They're the only appliance or main deck monster that exists right now, and you kind of have to max out on all of them. We have the one code breaker zero day. Think of this kind of like as a Halky Firebrax target type card because it's with extra deck cards. It's a Garnet, I guess. It's an extender. More on that later, uh, if you don't know what it is. So we have double Nibiru for hand traps, uh, double Ghost Ogre, double Effect Veiler, uh, the one DD Crow, which might sound weird, but you'll get to that later, the triple Gamma, and the Driver. So this is uh, 10 hand traps, I believe. Uh, it is more of a going first variant, but I feel like hand traps are really, really needed. And uh, Gamma has some utility going first because you're reliant on a searching field spell. So you can actually use that to... Uh, if your opponent like ashes you or something speaking of the field spell this card searches more on that later but uh that's why i like the gamma and the terraforming to get it plus the three reuse and the one monster reborn and the one appliance or test then i have triple machine dupe couldn't find the third one double war off thou one for one triple call by the grave and one imperial order now moving on into the extra deck we have the double celticlus the double laundry dragon the one kappa scale and the one dryer drake one vacuum elephant one virus swordsman one virus berserker one curious one griffin one unicorn one lambda boral sword and link rebos so now let's get into a more in-depth look so laid out here i have the pretty much bare minimum appliance or core so to go over how the deck works these two cards right here socket roll and copy buckle are the two best cards so socket roll what it does is when another appliance or socket roll is special summon you can special summon one from your deck which sounds like a weird effect because you have to have two of them on board they both have the effect, though, where if you control an appliance or monster, you can special summon this from your hand. Unfortunately, Breaker Ball does not have that effect. But basically, the bread and butter combo, so to say, is you would normal summon Socket Roll. Then you're going to use Copy Buckle's effect to special summon itself. Copy Buckle's other effects can activate to copy Socket Roll's name. Then Socket Roll activates and see another Socket Roll will summon to special summon you a Socket Roll from the deck. And you get three monsters on board very very easily that's why those are the two main ones as for breaker muckle it doesn't really do much it's more so just a name it has a kind of like a battle trap like effect i guess you could say you can discard it and take no battle damage and you can banish it if an appliance will be destroyed by card effect it's really just there for a name unfortunately it's a water if it was a dark it'd be a bit better because then you play alert in this deck but uh it's just a name and the reason why we need the names because we play machine dupe they are all machine dupe targets if you open with two of these plus machine dupe you get like five monsters on board very very strong then going on into the field spell probably the best card of the deck to be honest so appliance or electro lyrical world when you activate it you can search for any appliance or card besides the field spell so you can search for any of the monsters or you can search for test or reuse and once per battle phase you can switch the two locations of two appliance or link monsters that might sound weird but that'll come up more once you go over the link monsters because link monsters have effects when they're linked and when they're not co-linked which is really really strong and when an appliancer is link summoned you can add one appliancer from your graveyard to your hand which uh, comes up basically the main combo which i'll go over in a combo video tomorrow is lyrical world plus either copy buckle or socket roll and that's like the ideal combo nothing really super amazing but it's what you want to see then i have triple reuse one monster reborn reuse is a non-hard once per turn monster reborn for appliance or monsters but when they leave the field they go to the bottom of the deck instead of going to the graveyard or anything like that Still a really strong card, it's not once per turn and it's searchable. Still playing the Monster Reborn though because one of the issues with this deck is in order to go into the Griffin plays, which again I'll show in a combo tomorrow, a lot of times you just need another body on board and these cards will help you do that. Test isn't really that great because it does nothing going first. Basically what Test does is you activate it, target an appliance monster you control, I believe you target target fire monster you control, a link monster you control, yeah, and then special summon as many link one appliances from your graveyard, which sounds really really good, but the appliance or link monsters that are link one, cannot be used as link material to turn their summon, so it's never live turn one. Machine do obviously for all these, and then one for one because these are all level ones, and two war off though because they are all level ones. Far up on this up to three because one thing you can also do with this is you can actually search for your effect bailers or your DD Crow, which is why I'm playing the one DD Crow is because you can actually search it with war off though, and I wanted that tent hand trap as well. So that's pretty much the core appliance or stuff. 
So now I'll explain the hand traps really quickly. I'm playing 10 hand traps plus the driver because they're playing Gamma, of course. Now the thing with Gamma, like I was saying earlier, part of the reason why it's good even if you go first is because if you activate a Plants or a Lyrical World and it gets past or something, you can just Gamma and then you have that extra bodies on board to help you go into your Griffin plays, which is really strong. So the thing with this deck is it's, like I said, it's not really a great deck and you can't really do too much going first because your first turn boards are rather underwhelming. And when you go second, you really can't do much either because going second, you can't really OTK too reliably. So this deck's kind of in a weird spot where you can't really go first too effectively, you can't really go second too effectively. So I, that's why I'm playing a lot of hand traps because generally when you have a deck that's really not that great, if you just put a bunch of hand traps in it, it makes the deck a little bit better. And then for other utility cards, you know, just playing with three Call by the Grave just so your plays go off. And then one Imperial Order because you can set it off of Griffin with Curious, which is pretty strong. And having Griffin with the Penerial Order is like the best board that the Pure Variant can make, assuming you play the Codebreaker Zero Day, which uh, we'll get more into this when we get into the extra deck, but uh, this card really makes the deck so much better. It's only one main deck slot and two extra deck slots, but uh, we'll get more into the extra deck right now. So getting into the actual Appliance or Link Monsters, we have the Double Celtipus, Double Laundry Dragon, Kappa Scale, Dryer Drake, and Vacuum Elephant. Celtipus is the only Link to that, it's the only one that points down as well, and it's the only one that uses Link to return it as summon, which does come up sometimes. Basically, the reason why you play this is just because it's an appliance or name that points down and you need it in order to get your link arrows correctly. Because like I said before, the appliancers have monsters, have effects, I should say, based on if they're co-linked or not co-linked. And this is how you co-link them. Because as you notice, these two point straight up, these two point diagonally in order to point to this. This one has a couple effects, so I don't want to butcher this if I accidentally mess it up. So I know that they can't be, this link card can't be targeted by opponent's card effects, which is pretty strong, or monster effects, or, or monster attacks, I should say. And then during damage calc, if a Plants or Link monster you control that is co-linked with this card battles with this monster, the battling monster gains attack equal to the monster's co-link to this card times 1,000, so usually about 2,000 if you do the quote-unquote full combo. Uh, and that's really the main reason why you play the card, just for the arrows, to be honest. It also functions well with the Codebreaker stuff, which I'll get to in a second. Launch Drag is my favorite one, that's why I'm playing two. It points straight up. This, funny enough, is actually a one card out to the Utopic Dexo board that Numerion's put up, because... What this card does is when it attacks, you can just destroy the opponent's monster and then they take battle damage equal to the attack or take effect damage equal to the attack. So against Numerions, you just summon any vacuum or summon any appliance or link to this and attack. And that's why you play it. And then when it's not co-linked, you can banish the I believe I'm getting those right. I don't want to make sure I'm mixing those effects up because it gets confusing. So um after damage calc, if this co-link monster battles opponent's monster, you can banish that opponent's monster. And then if it's not co-linked, you uh, do the battle damage and destroy it. Or the effect damage and destroy it. Kappa Skill is actually a really, really cool one. So I only play one because it doesn't come up too, too much. It came up more when I was actually like, playing on Dueling Book versus just doing regular test hands. But what this card does is, of course, it can be used for Link Material. But you can tribute this card when it's co-linked, special summon an appliance or Link from the graveyard when it's linked. And when it's not co-linked, you can tribute to special summon appliance to level 4 lore monster. So one of the main deck ones. So what you can do, like, I know some people... They like to play the Format Skipper and they like to play the Parallax Seed. I'm not playing that because I feel like it requires too much steps, but you need Compa Skill in order to do that because what you would do is you would Normal Summon Format Skipper, copy any of the Appliancers, link it to Compa Scale, then tribute it to bring back the level 1, get your Parallax Seed, link the level 1 to Link Rebo, then summon the Parallax Seed to act as sort of like an extender. The issue with that is then you have the Link Rebo pointing down in order to get the Parallax Seed off. So Parallaxy is not a bad card in this deck, I just feel like it doesn't come up enough to warrant me playing it. Plus, I don't have any and I couldn't find the room. Uh, but I did test it on Dueling Book and it was okay, just I feel like for the more pure variant, uh, it was better to not run it. And then Dry Drake and Vacu Elephant. Go over Vacu Elephant first, I really like this one too, because it's kind of like a Nightmare Monster. So what it does is when it's linked, you can, when it's, I, can't, I don't want to mess up the effects, but um, it can attack directly when it is not co-link, so that could be good in time situations. And then you can discard a card to the graveyard to target a card opponent's controls and destroy it. And then if it is co-linked, you just destroy a monster in the main monster zone, which is pretty cool. Uh, Dryer Drake lets you switch around zones and it can uh, gain attack. That's It's really not that great, but basically it's going first. You summon this one because uh, Vacuum Elephant has nothing going first. just kind of a waste of a card. So that's the Appliancers. The ideal board that you put up turn one if you're going for the pure Appliancer play is you have Celtipus with Dryer Drake and Laundry Dragon co-linked and then you have the field spell so you can switch these two around and make them not co-linked anymore uh, so you get both of their effects if you want so that is it for the appliancer cards and now moving on into the next part of the extra deck which is going to be the code breaker stuff so this is actually a really really cool little engine that uh, doesn't require too much commitment so basically the way it works is code breaker virus swords is where it starts so what you wanted to do ideally is you want to summon your Celtipus. And then you want to go into your virus swordsman right under it so it's co-linked 
Swordsman's effects can activate to special summon Zero Day to another Link Zone, being this other South of a Zone. And then you're going to link these two, go into Virus Berserker, and Virus Berserker's effects can activate special summon two Codebreaker Swordsmen, or Codebreaker Monsters, I should say, from your graveyard to zones Link Monsters point to. So you get one here and another one here. So basically, off of a Link 2, you get a Link 3 and an extra monster as well, which is really strong. Then you can go into Griffin, you can make Curious plays if you have other monsters on board to go into Curious. And it just makes this deck be able to do a lot more because getting co-link monsters in this deck really isn't too difficult. And then continuing on, we have the Curious and the Griffin. Griffin comes up more because you can summon Griffin pretty easily while it's linked. And uh, you can usually what you can do is you can go, say, Celtipus, Griffin, and then uh, Dryer Drake. And again, it's not really that amazing, but it's something you can do, which is decent. And then you can do the, the basic, you know, Curious Griffin, send Imperial Order, set something, which is pretty, pretty good. I'm playing the Unicorn, which might seem redundant because of Aki Elephant, but I found that in plays where I want to go into Griffin, sometimes I just need a generic Link 3, and it's also a Dark Fiend, which helps go into Curious Plays. Granted, it wastes a lot of Link material because it's a Link 3, but it does come up more so for the fact that it is a Dark Generic Link 3, more so than its effect being a generically good effect. Uh, one Lambda, because going first, if you draw into your Gammas and you don't need to use them, you can actually just make this and then have an Interruption. Uh, it's pretty easy to make this, and you can still co-link stuff to it, like Dryer Drake. Unfortunately, it doesn't point straight down. If it did point, like self would be much better. But still a pretty good card, Generic Link 2. Uh, Boral Search for OTKs, and then Link Kriba, because, you know, everything's level 1. Comes up a lot, easy to bring out, and it's just a generically good card. So that is going to be it for my Appliancer deck. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about it. I will be doing a combo video probably tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that. I'll show you guys some of the basic combos. And I do plan on doing a variant that is playing Orcus, because I think the Orcus variant can actually be pretty strong. Might be the best variant to play this deck. And I do plan on making a lot of Appliancer videos for the next month. Appliancer August, if you will, even though this first video is going to be out a few days before August. Either way, I'm rambling. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you all next time, and bye-bye.